my concern today is a real, for Kim and I, our real issue is social unrest. You know, the gap between the rich and poor is now excessive. And um, that leads to revolution, civil rioting and all this. And this is an excerpt from the introduction to her book, Permanent Distortion. It says, when you print all this fake money and you rig it for the rich only, which is fine with me, but you should tell people, mm-hmm. that's what nobody's doing, it's rigged. Mm-hmm. It says, what, what, that, what that produces is a wave of intensified and widespread social unrest, disjointed political upheaval, dangerous extremism, punishing trade wars, and sweeping isolation. And that's what Nomi is writing about when you rig the system for the rich. And just FY as a commercial message, Rich Dad would rather have you become rich than revolt. Hello and welcome to Wealthy Value. In today's video, American businessman, author and the founder of the Rich Dad Company, Robert Kiyosaki updates about the impact of social unrest and political upheaval on the economy, why central banks are baffling investors, and how money printing and debt are destroying our financial system. Make sure to stick around till the end of this video where Robert Kiyosaki discusses how the financial markets have abandoned the real economy forever and what that means to the average person. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the post notifications. Let's dive right into the video. Well, not only the Fed, you know what I, I think is hysterical is that when Obama got elected, everybody, oh, Obama's for the people. But when he got elected, the first thing he did was bail out the banks and General Motors and all the failing con- con- uh, companies. He is on the inside. I mean, he's working with them. And well, everybody, oh, he's a man of the people. Bullshit. He bailed out the rich again. You know what I mean? Give me a break. Not what the guys, he's a, he's a smooth talker. He was definitely, yes. Watch what they do. Watch what they do. Not what they say. What are they doing? And he bailed out the rich. Oh, but he's a man of the people. Give me an effing break. I just can't believe what's happening. How can they raid a president's house? You know, and that's what everyone was afraid of during World War II. The Gestapo would come knocking, so they hired 87,000 new IRS agents and the FBI can come into your house. Now, they don't want IRS agents taking your teeth. They're after your money. So if you understand what's going on, that's why your work uh, being an insider is priceless. I mean, we're being lied to. And and look at the teachers unions, the biggest political donors to campaigns, and they love the Democrats. I'm not Republican or Democrat, but I just want them to tell the effing truth. You know what I mean? You're socialists and you're communists and Nazis. What I, what I think was funny was Obama bails out the banks, then he orders uh, Bernanke, his, you know, he, that, that's supposedly not connected, the central bank and uh, uh, Obama. But he says, okay, Ben, helicopter it to the people now. Okay, we, we propped up the bankers and the Wall Street and all this. Now let's give a few dollars to the uh, people. And that was stimmy checks. And you, if you watch history, you can see it playing out. Again, it's not what they say, it's what do they do? The banking system is creating more pe- poor people. It's creating this gap, it's a social problem. The gap between rich and poor is getting wider and wider and wider. And my whole shtick is that, are the central banks as a government and the US treasury, and politicians are the evil or stupid and we haven't come to an answer yet there is a brightness at the end of the tunnel and i i I do address it um in my book and i do think there's areas to invest as a result um the 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 downside first is that when we have such a distortion and i do i do think we're this is this is our reality this is our lifetime we have a situation where central banks continually fuel the market with fabricated money which means it goes to the banking system it goes to wall street um it funnels basically debt between the fed the government wall street etc and none of that borrowed money gets into the real economy so in a way it's pointless to borrow it so you have an indebted government but it's not necessarily planned into the real economy that's a problem it goes into financial markets that creates instability that creates um as robert said more poor people more social unrest it creates a a situation on the negative side where people are so disconnected in their real daily lives from what they see sort of happening at the financial sort of realm of wall street and the markets is that they get angry they get disenfranchised. They they riot. 
um, they they want to fight back because they feel so so uneasy about this whole situation. Now, on the positive side, um, I do believe that there are some sectors that evolve out of this great distortion, this permanent distortion that will see a combination of that money flow of that cheap money but also our major growth areas which can help the economy and get us out to that extent of some of this mess and i break those into transitional energy sources um, and materials commodities um, infrastructure in terms of whether it's water whether it's ports whether it's um, roads and, and the and the actual structuring and the materials that go into that so again real stuff um transformative technology so not things like facebook where like you know it's just sort of connecting it's not it's not real but the kind of technology that allows us to you know create better architecture to create better transportation uh, to basically create better um data more secure data and all of that to drive our economy right but, uh, my whole point if you understand the problem you might be able, able to make better choices decisions I love what you say in your introduction, he says here, the very existence of this debt became an inconvenient excuse for governments the world over to cut budgets mm -hmm. and reduce public spending in areas such as medical care, education, retooling for workers, and infrastructure. So our debt is eating us alive. That's right. But when, when helicopter Ben Bernanke says, Okay, well, we, we've given enough, you know, when Obama says, I'm gonna bail out the banks and GM and all those guys and the, the finance markets, then helicopter Ben says, well, we should give some to the people. Now all that's debt. And so let me read it again. The very existence of this debt became a convenient excuse for governments the world over to cut budgets, reduce public spending in areas such as medical care, education, retooling for workers and infrastructure. That's ripe for revolution right there. You know, we're getting so, and what happens is when people are suffering financially, what uh, what happened when Obama was in market, they said, how in the world can he bail out the rich? I'm losing my house. And at that point, the people, the proletariat who became Trump devotees, you know, uh, the, <clears throat> the Tea Party movement for a sake, they get angry. Mm -hmm. And they take their anger out rather than understand the problem. Mm -hmm. And the reason I like, you know, your book's Collusion, All the Bankers, Men, and this book here, Permanent Distortion. If you understand the cause of the problem, you might be able to take, be able to do something about it. But to go to a, a government solution saying, well, the government should do this, good luck. Mm -hmm. The government is not on your side, as you know. I and mean, Obamacare was about health care, but it was really about insurance. Mm -hmm. You know, it really wasn't about your health care. And it was a political ploy. Like they're going to they're going to forgive the student loan debt. Now, you know, the five, uh, the woke group and wherever they are in the house led by uh, AOC, they're going to forgive the government debt. I mean, the student loan debt. Why? They can get elected. We, we go to the bigger picture problem, but a lot of people don't understand the problem, which was the original question I had for you. Are these guys corrupt or just stupid? And then they, the, the court is still out here. Right. Look at what happened in Sri Lanka. A lot of that problem was because of the Green New Deal. They wanted those people to shift to organic fertilizer. They couldn't produce enough. And that's what's going on here too. So, you know, I wrote about my book, Capitalist Manifesto. The uh, Green New Deal movement is a socialist move. move. You know, they, they want to give everything to the people and Rich Dad and you and Kim and I, I said, why not teach people about money? I mean, why don't you teach them? But you can't teach people if your leaders are stupid or corrupt. And you or don't understand economics, which I'll definitely like give all of them. <laughs> I'll put them, all of them in the box of just not understanding. Because what's economics? Basically, it's you and I paying for stuff we need to live, right? Um, and and how whatever that looks like, right? The profit in that, the investment, in that, whatever it looks like. An economy is literally an exchange of of items and services for money. And when those things don't match. Who's in charge of education? NEA. And you hear what Trump, I'm not pro Trump or against Trump, you know, but he stood up there at the CPAC thing and he says, let's abolish the Department of Education. You got a thunderous applause. That wouldn't, that wouldn't be possible 10 years ago. You know, to, before 10 people thought teachers walked on water, but this is a story of rich dad, poor dad. My poor dad was a PhD, poor as a church mouse. He's teaching kids. He's teaching kids.
Are you kidding me? In reality, you can't do that if the system is rigged against you is what you're saying in your books. Yes. The that, system is rigged for the rich, not the poor and middle class. And I went to a school, I'm an oil guy. I went to Kingsport Merchant Marine Academy. I was a tanker officer driver, so I was in the oil industry. And you look at when Biden cut off the XL pipeline, you know, and also the price of, you know, Kim and I own oil wells. We're mm. being paid $30 a barrel. And the moment he cut down that pipeline, oil went from 30 to 130. And we wonder why, we, why is there inflation? Right. That, that SOB, Biden cut the pipe, cut the oil off, and then he blames Russia for doing it. I mean, and then Yellen gets up there and she's talking about Green New Deal. She's a secretary, what is she, Treasury Secretary or something? Yes. And she's talking about that and Green New Deal and going, what, are we nuts? Have we lost it? And everybody knows, every politician, like congressmen and senators, they can inside trade, but you cannot. Give me a break. So that's, so that's where you're on and your books expose the underside, the dark side, the inside. So when I was reading Collusion, I was going, oh my God, that you verified my suspicions as you've been on the inside. So what do you think happens when the economy is fake? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.